Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about regular expression capturing group numbering. I'm going to pull up my web browser for my website, javacjava.com, select Menu and Regex Tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the regex capturing group numbering. So in this tutorial, I'll discuss capturing group numbering, but before I begin this topic, I'd like to do a quick recap of some important capturing group concepts that I've subtly introduced in other tutorials. In my regex capturing group introduction tutorial, I provided a very simplistic overview of capturing groups. All right? Um, basically, if you watch the tutorial, this is exactly what I had in there, like lizard, the string literal, and then followed by an S or a Z, right? And you can do a capturing group there, followed by an S or a Z, which is the same as like, for example, this or that, and which is the same as this or that, which is the same as this or that, right? And so anyway, um, when a capturing group is applied to a quantifier, the search pattern has changed quite dramatically. So take for example, we've got a string literal round here and we do the quantifier two right after that on this whole regular expression. What this means, it's going to look for R-O-U-N and then the D is actually where the quantifier is applied. So this is going to search for a pattern um, that'll return true if R-O-U-N-D-D exists, okay? So it's the D that's doubling up for the quantifier there. Um, if we enclose the R-O-U-N-D in parentheses, now we have a capturing group for round, and then if we put the quantifier after that, that'll return true if the pattern round round exists in the search string, okay? Now in my pattern class tutorial, I demonstrated how capturing groups can work to produce the same results as the overloaded version of the dot .compile um, string regex in flags method, okay? So basically here, we've got the string literal the, okay? Or the regular expression the, essentially the same thing in this particular case, and then we have the pattern.case insensitive. So what we can do is we can do this particular capturing group, um, question mark I, right? Followed by this capturing group, the, okay? Well, I'm not being entirely truthful here, right? The is the only capturing group in here. The question mark I is actually what's called a inline modifier. And what you're going to see is anytime you have like, for example, left parenthesis, followed by a question mark, it can mean, um, geez, it can mean a ton of stuff. Well over a dozen advanced things, uh, way more advanced that I can talk about in this particular thing here, but you're just gonna wanna be aware that when you see a left parentheses followed by a question mark, there's a good chance that it's not a capturing group at all, and it has might not have anything to do with the capturing group whatsoever, but it might. You know, it all depends on that context of things, you know, and that's, a, that's of course, you know, the cryptics you know, nature of, of regular expressions there. But in this particular case, the inline modifier, which looks like a capturing group, but it's not, is represented by lowercase i, which does the same thing as case insensitive. That says the whole entire regular expression, we're not, we're gonna match the and uppercase or any combination of upper and lower things there. So I'll just reiterate here, and the example above is important to note that the left parentheses dollars or question mark I, right parentheses is not a capturing group, it's technically an inline modifier. Now don't worry about all that for now. We'll discuss inline modifiers and non-capturing groups in another tutorial. Inline modifiers and non-capturing groups do not apply when it comes to capturing group number, capture group numbering. Now capturing groups are automatically numbered when the regex is compiled. Now the numbering begins at zero which is automatically the entire group, okay? Now the rest of the groups begin at number one and are numbered from left to right depending on the order of their opening parentheses. We can invoke the group count method on a match or object to find out the number of groups in the regex. Now one of the interesting things on that is the number is the automatically numbered group zero, which is the whole entire thing, does not count to does not does not count on the group count method there. And I'll just show you this here. Now let's analyze this regex here, right? Um, basically, if we, we take the first, first little token here, lizard, and then the negation, no S, right? 
and this is not anything there. But then when we take and we put this one here, now we have a capturing group and our group count is going to be equal to one. So group zero is the whole entire thing. And group one begins at this left parenthesis and runs all the way through that one there, okay? And you'll notice group zero doesn't count towards the group count. In down in this next little portion of it here, we've got um, the whole entire thing is group number zero. This is group number one right here. And this is group number two right here. And this one right here, we have group number zero, which is the same as group number one because we're starting group number one here and uh, let's see right here and ending it right there, which just happens to be group number one as well. So this is group number two, start, starting and ending there. Group number three starts and ends right here. All right, and we get our group count of three. Now if we throw in an inline modifier, which you know, looks like a capturing group, only it starts with this question mark here and then has a lowercase i, and basically indicating um, ignore case. Sometimes they're called like flags too as well, so just, um, just know that there as well. But then of course we have the same exact group count there on this particular group with group number one, group number two, and of course group number three. All right, so at this point, you might be wondering what can we do with num numbered capturing groups? Well, in the master class, the, the methods start with the overloaded, ver overloaded um, flavor that we can basically pass in a group number. We also have the end method where we can pass in a group number, and we have the group method where we can pass in a group number. All allow us to fine tune our search results. We can also do like certain replacements and stuff like that on that too, but I'll get into that later. Now we can, we can also use them to find repeating patterns, which I'll demonstrate in my back references tutorial. Now let's take a look at the string literal. Is Godzilla a lizard? Lizards are reptiles, but lizards are just a subclass of reptiles. I think the real question is who really cares? And come up with a way of determining how many times lizard is used either singular versus plural. Uh, let's go ahead and come down here to the source code, highlight everything, control C to copy or right click and select copy. Move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to my command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CM, CMD, next and finish. I like that, delete it. Let's click on this. And if you're new to my tutorials, first thing you wanna do is type in Java C, which is Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing and configuring the Java development kit. You wanna make sure you get that done properly before continuing. CLS to close screen, CD space backslash, CD short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm gonna make a directory here called Java using the MD command, and I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm gonna make another directory here called uh, regx group numbering, and I'm gonna change directory and change directories to that folder, CD, and then I hit tab to quickly do that. And then notepad, regex group numbering dot java. Okay. Control V to paste and, or right click and select paste, right? Um, let's come up here and save this. So basically right off the bat, first statement, importing the Java util regex package there. Single class here, here's our main method entry point. Um, just to begin with, I'm just make sure I get that saved. Let's clear our screen. Let's compile it. Java C, hit tab to quickly bring that up. And then I'm gonna type in Java, hit tab, and strip off that dot class to invoke the class. And we'll just kind of take this line by line for the group counts here, okay? So basically the regular expression, <clears throat> this one has two of them in there, right? Group number one, group number two, our group count is two, just as we expected there, right? This next regular, oh, and display count, I suppose I should talk about that here real quick. So the display count method down here is a static void display count, taking in a string for the regular expression there. I'm creating a matcher m reference variable, type matcher, and I'm invoking the static method com pattern dot compile, passing, of course, the regex, string regex, and then piggybacking the matcher, invoking the matcher method right off of that, which will return us back the matcher object. Now I'm only using just a, basically a blank string literal here with a space in it there. So, because I'm not really concerned about matching anything, only just group counts for the initial part of this. And then, then I'll show you some of the stuff we can do, demonstrate some other stuff with that too as well, okay? 
So the display count method there with um, this regular expression right here, right? Now remember, since this is a uh, basically an inline modifier there, we uh, it's not gonna be counted. So we only have one in here and you can see that that's just what we expected one up there, right? And then basically I took those, those lizards examples up there and showed you all of them there. Pretty self-explanatory group count. Omrot one is right there. Group count two, here's one, here's another one. Group count three, there's one, which is the whole entire thing basically, two and three. And then a group count three with the inline modifier in there too as well. Okay, so all in all, fairly simple on that. Now let's uh, come down to the next thing that I do here, and I'm creating, of course, a a matcher reference point to a matcher object, and I'm compiling the um, this regular expression right here. Okay, and which is, of course is the ignore case, and we are looking for either lizard without an S or lizards with an S, okay? And lizards without an S will be our group number two, all right? Because of course this is group number one. This is group number two for our singular lizard and group number three for our plural lizard is right here, okay? And then invoking the matcher method on the same string literal we talked about earlier. So the first thing I'm gonna do is display the group count, which um, will be equal to three, right? And there it is right there. And let's go ahead and move all this stuff up here. And let's talk about what we do next in this, in this loop here. So we're looping through, as long as find returns back true, we're going to invoke all these statements there. So the first one we're displaying to the console is just an ordinary group find. So of course the find finds all of the occurrences of the, um, regular expression from left to right. So the first one it finds is this one right here, okay? And the reason why it finds the question mark is of course, because we're gonna have either lizard um, with no S, okay? And that's that's the one in or, right? Lizards with an S, okay? So group number two is where it's actually going to match, but when we do the whole entire thing, which is basically, you know, the, the group without that, it'll just find a match on either either this or this, right? And so the ordinary group, we get lizard question mark, okay? Now, when we invoke group number two, which is this one right here, we get, um, so you can see lizard question mark up there, which matches our pattern right here, okay? Which is lizard with no s we're negating out the s there in that in this particular little character class here and then group three you'll notice which is lizard with an s right you get null so null comes back there okay and then i'm just displaying a line to the console and then you know behind the scenes i'm saying if group two is not equal to null we're just going to add one to the singular value the singular value up here simple int primitive int singular and plural up here now, if group number three is not null, we're going to incre increment plural, okay? So on the next, on the next um, loop through on the while there, it's going to find this one right here, right? And of course, because we specified the ignore case with the inline modifier there, um, that's going to ignore the case on the, on, for this uppercase lizard, right? But now, um, this particular one, group two, is not going to match because we need a lizard with no S, and this is a lizard with S, so group three is going to. So when we pull this down here, we see our ordinary group returns back the lizards with the uppercase L. Now group two is now null, and group three is the one that it, that it was successful on there, okay? All right, and then the last loop through that it that it's going to find here, the find method is going to find this one here, which is lowercase lizards all the way across there. And then of course there's no other occurrence of lizards there. So we have one singular lizard right here, right? And then we have two plurals here, okay? So in our final loop through here, we get lizards lowercase, group two is equal to null, group three is equal to lizards there, okay? And then so for our count down here, then I'm just going to display the count to the, to the console there. Singular lizard usage, singular, plural lizards usage, plural, okay? And then, so we get singular lizard one, plural liz li lizards usage two. All right, so that's that's basically about number group numbering and how it works. They're all numbered from left to right. And I'm going to kind of give you a little teaser on my next tutorial there. Let's say, for example, 
Um, you've got all this stuff hard coded in your in your stuff there, and you decide that you want to go ahead and do something like I don't know, like uh, reptiles, right? We want to search for reptiles or that, right? Or lizard or lizards or whatever, right? And you come in here and you're like, okay, I'm just going to modify my regular expression and say this is like like a year later or something like that. Oh yeah, we want that to be included in the in our search results too as well. Well, if we come up and save and recompile this, let's clear our screen and let's run it again. Right now, all of a sudden, singular lizard usage two, plural lizard usage one. Oh, we screwed it all up, and that is because, um, of course, this is still group number one, but now this is group number two, and this is group number three, and this is group number four. So all of our numbers are off down here. And my next tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can name your groups instead of actually relying on the numbering there. And then that eliminates any sort of issues that you can have with, you know, coming back and modifying your regular expressions and forgetting to change your group numbers here down in, in your code or whatnot there, right? So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and get rid of that and just leave you with some quick final thoughts there. And that's basically stay tuned for my next tutorial. We'll teach you how to name your capturing groups. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.